All right, what's happening? So here we go, it's another week of grinding. We're about two thirds of the way through for the x Form series. Let's go ahead and maybe discuss some of the things that have happened. A lot of the times I talk about the advantages, the things that are working in my favor. I don't really discuss the things that are not working at my disadvantage. First and foremost, the weather. It's been killing me in terms of getting my daily walks. It's been too cold, windy, and that's something I'm just, there's days I'll endure it. And this, the last two weeks, I just made the decision to not do that. I had to use the treadmill instead, which was unfortunate because I really just like the treadmill and I've said that in the past. Use different incline angles, I use different speeds, but something I had to do to overcome that dislike or that really that not want to do it is um, someone told me about this show called The Chosen. Something that kind of just made my mind go elsewhere while I was on the treadmill because it's not my preference. I find it fascinating, um, got really engaged into it. So that hour passed by pretty fast. So we've also been pretty busy with the kids' schedules. It's just something that's inevitable in family life. So I had to move some things around, some of my training. Sometimes I wasn't able to train as hard and it was just something I had to just go day by day. It is a long journey. I'm not terribly worried about it, but it was still a little defeating, you know, when I couldn't get go into the gym and give my full 60 minutes. You know, I was either late or, you know, sometimes I'd be found. You know, I'd talk to people who were there. And that's something else I want to point out about gym time or just things in general in life and something I've learned over the last year and it has to do with the gym because there's some people who are very social and they're not getting the work in then there's people who are super intense something I've kind of prioritized over the last year is to be say more aware of my not just environment but the people that are there and building those relationships up and you know just kind of caring for others and just you know hearing someone else's story or how they've been and not so say dialed in to, to my workout and i found that very helpful you know on both ends you know i find it interesting you know to learn about others and maybe they're learning about me so something i kind of adapted to is thinking okay the weights are always going to be there these conversations and relationships you know they're kind of limited time and you may not get another time to talk again make an assessment is it worth say the is my workout more important than say this certain conversation? And there's some conversations, let's say if they're trailing into the realm of gossip or to something that is just entertainment and something that I don't really care about, then I'll kind of get back to work. But sometimes there's just interesting conversations and I like hearing other people say stories, you know, their journey and how it's going and you know, things they're prioritizing or maybe struggling with or things they're getting success in. I love hearing about that stuff. So that's one of the reasons I've learned recently to just start, you know, prioritizing conversations when they seem important and scenarios come and go. So that's just how life is. Another struggle for me for sure was the nutrition side. And I was hoping to keep my calories a little bit higher this last week and they were lower and I was just having to eat more towards the end of the day. And it's one of not my favorite thing, but just the way I had to move workouts around and just being so busy. Ah oh, man, it was, I usually like to have a little more calories. And at this point, yes, I'll probably lose a little weight. And what's funny about that though, is that I was 193 this morning, which you would say, wow, you gained weight over the last week. And that's not necessarily the truth because my salt intake was very high last week. It just happened that, you know, a lot of say the protein options, I had a lot of deli hams and just little random protein, we'll call them snacks, um, little protein supplement bars, things like that. And they're filled with salts and just to make them taste good, you know, nobody's gonna buy a protein bar or chips or whatever that just tastes like not good. And therefore with the higher salt and my higher water intake lately, it's just inevitable the scale's gonna be up. But my training, like I said, it was still good. Just it could have been better if I was able to say prioritize it and really focus into it. Probably the last thing that was, and I'm finding more difficult in this journey this year, is trying to have to do content and editing, say series and all these different uh, perspectives in, in the play. And unfortunately I have to listen to myself talk a lot, which is really not my favorite thing. It's actually my least favorite thing to do in this whole process is hearing myself say things and edit things out and move things around. Because when I'm filming, you know, I'm trying to get this done really quick. I don't really have a script per se. It's like, I'm just kind of thinking off the top of my head, you know, things to talk about and things to cover. And it's not just about me, it's about thinking about where other people may be at this point. So being say two thirds in, you know, many people will start to struggle with the nutrition side, maybe being a little more hungry because the calories are too low or something else that's come up recently in the last week for me is maybe starting to get a little burned out overtraining and that was another reason that I was kind of happy it was a blessing in disguise that I didn't train so hard because I could just tell my body's worn I'm not sleeping as good and there's just things I'm struggling with and those senses you know trying to keep up with all this content 
and trying to keep up with all my hats in life, it's, it's a lot right now. So I'm doing my best to stay positive, but it's hard. I get moody, I get a little grumpy. You know, sometimes I think about just like, well, I don't need to do it anymore, or I'm way ahead of the curve. I can take a, a break for a week, but this is very intentional. So I have a, a whole, say, schedule and a game plan of how I'd love to finish this out and for it to really have its maximum impact and effectiveness. Stuff, so D3, um, if you haven't seen this stuff, I mean, it's probably in fruits and vegetables, but one of the best sources I've heard and that I really like is um, getting it through the sun. You know, the sunlight can help you, you know, get that directly through the skin. Those are gummies, something else you have to be careful about in the world of supplements is sometimes they have calories in them. And that's why they taste so good, say 10 calories a gummy. And then, you know, you start munching on these every day. The calories add up at some point, but it's really for if I wasn't getting enough D3. So right now, because I haven't been getting enough sunlight, I'm using these just because it helps me with D3. In digestion, you can only absorb so much. That's 625% of my daily value. Well, I can't absorb all of this. So they're just kind of counting on overloading it and your system's only going to take so much in. I used to do this one all the time and this is my wife's because I just, these get expensive. But, and if you have the budget to do all this stuff, then that's fantastic. I found over the years that I, I saw no difference between t putting things in and taking them out. And that's how I knew whether it was effective or not. Like fish oil is a huge one. I gotta have my fish oil, you know, for my omegas and yeah, sure, there's different ones and some have taste and fishy taste and you can go look at all the benefits from them. But to me, it, when it comes to fish oil, I'm just gonna eat fish like salmon. Um, there's other ways to get your omegas in, but now here we go. We got another rando here. We got some gummies. This is a multivitamin. And so I was big on multivitamins for a long time. And the one thing about multivitamins, and I, this is why I stopped taking them, is because there were one that I didn't notice a difference when I removed them. I ran out and I didn't buy any more. And I was going through about a month. I'm like, I feel no different. I just feel the same. You know, some people say, oh, I feel great on my multivitamin. Like I noticed a different smell in my urine, save for some of the, you know, the pill versions. And this is the gummy version, which is calories so now there we go we're adding more calories and if you're on a diet that's say very restricted and you're not eating say certain foods or you're just picky like some people don't like to be you know adventurous and have variety and and I used to be like that for a very long time. I had the same very regimented types of foods I liked and nothing else. I didn't eat vegetables for a very long time, probably almost 30 years. I hated vegetables, but I learned over time that, hey, they were kind of essential. They were gonna make me feel better, but some people don't wanna do that. So if you have a multivitamin to supplement all those vitamins and minerals and what we call micronutrients, it's a great way to do it is through a multivitamin. But if you're having a bunch of different say foods and variety then there's no need in my opinion one thing i'll do is make sure to have you know a few fr fruits and veggies a week and then i'll rotate and change and try something new here and there that's the way i do it you know you're getting say various um sources to find out you know something you might actually find as a superfood is when you have it and you just feel there's something about it that makes you feel really good could be placebo, but it could also just be there's something in that that your body responds really well to. Like for me, oatmeal is one that I, my body responds really well to when it comes to energy and strength. Unfortunately, it takes a little longer to digest, so it's one you have to be careful with cardio. Creatine is the one. This is the one I'm probably not gonna get. I think you have to eat a lot of red meat, and I generally like to spread my protein out versus, you know, with eggs and ground turkey and through various sources. So I probably maybe could benefit a little bit from this, and I do in terms of my strength and training, and I've noticed that when I take it out, there's a lot that goes into this. And then there's gonna be supplements out there that are say research for some time, that had some science for a little bit, and then science changed. This is a perfect version of it, BCAAs. Am I for them or am I against them? Well, I'm neutral on them and I'm neutral on a lot of this stuff. I haven't told you anything that I would say is bad for you or this is good for you. You really have to just self-assess. You have to try some different things, listen to say some different experts out there. And if someone's selling you a supplement, then they're gonna tell you it's good. So I would make sure to evaluate really closely who or why, if there is a biasm in that, then if there's no biasm and you say someone you know is like, hey, I'm noticing this, that's one I'm probably gonna try or say, hey, that's a good idea. Let me give that a shot. And it may or may not work. But if it's someone that has a vested interest in a product, that's one I'm just gonna say absolutely not, unless someone I know and trust just tells me, hey, you should try that out. That's what I'm all about is getting as much as you can with the resources that you are you're using, like food or say sunlight or you know whatever benefit you're getting from endorphin release from exercise, like you know what I mean. This stuff is to supplement things that you are not getting 
in your current lifestyle and that you can't squeeze in one way or another. Like I said, it really comes down to your budget. It really comes down to, you know, if it's something you want to try, see how it works for you. Because if it's not giving you any kind of advantage or benefit or, you know, it's not, um, it's probably not worth it. So that's just my opinion on it. It's always best to give something a shot and see if you like it. The main one for me this week is obviously creatine. And that's something that's going to bring my, say, hydration up. And so I'm drinking a lot more water. I did my weigh-in this morning and I was actually a couple pounds down from last week. And I know I wasn't in a high enough deficit to lose two pounds of fat. So I think that I'm a little bit dehydrated. And since I just started creatine, it's something I have to be very careful for. And I might start cramping up. So for I'm about to hit my workout. I've had, it's probably going on almost a gallon and a half of fluids today. So I'm gonna be hydrating up um, the entire time. There's, you know, little other supplements like I use called Liquid, liquid IV. So it's something that, you know, if you ever get dehydrated, you don't have to drink a quantity of water. You know, it can help you re replenish electrolytes. And there's a lot of products like that out there too, which are also supplements in my opinion. Sometimes I speak in the language of body fat percentage. So right now, you know, based on my physique, I would call it around, you know, 17, 18% body fat. I, I'm not a bodybuilder. It doesn't really matter. Some people set body fat percentage goals. And I've done that many times in the past. The only thing I don't like about it is that we all carry our fat in different areas. And for the most part, most of the population, it's, it's really not going to matter if you're, say, a difference of if you're 9% or 11%, unless you have some specific need to be there. Um, maybe it is a one-time goal just to see how lean you can get. But for me, I carry a lot of extra fat, say, in my, my glutes and in my legs. Um, I'm just lucky that my, my core, you know, is one of the first places it'll start to go. But right now, barely see some abs. As I get leaner and leaner and leaner, it's, you're going to notice a lot more definition. And I, I don't really care what percentage I am. In the end, it's just about getting as lean as my body and my mind will allow me to get. If you haven't checked it out yet, you can go to Ya Boy Coach. And I've been releasing daily videos um, based on my transformation last year, which is T-Form. And there's hardly any subscribers. There's hardly any views. But that's kind of, it's not really made to do that. It's made, you know, so that those who are trying to see, you know, how I do day in and day out and just little tips to get along the way, it's a daily video. It's something for you to stay motivated, encouraged, and just see that, you know, I, I didn't really, I don't always hit my goals and, you know, I'm not, I'm far from perfect, but I, I still try and keep a positive mindset moving forward. So at this point so far, is there, are there down days? <laughs> Absolutely. Are you ever down, coach? Yes, like I, this is hard. This is a struggle. Do my best to kind of come out of that. So that's where the spiritual and the mental side kind of helps me with that. And you know, refocusing. Sometimes I just need a good night's sleep. Sometimes I just need a big meal. There's a lot of different ways. There's just areas, you know, of life that are hard, you know, and that's what makes life challenging. I guess what makes it worth it is if it was easy, the best things don't come easy. You know, they take work. No conflict in the house. Um, you know, good, good relationships with the friends and family. That there's a lot of things that can. You know, change mood and emotion. So yeah, there's days I have ups and downs. And, you know, if you haven't seen that yet, I mean, that's something that's going to be very evident in the Q form series because when you're in a high deficit, it, it, everything's miserable. When you start the suffering process, it's it's not good. And we really only have a few weeks left of uh, the X form series. And then what's next? Well, I'm still thinking that over. There is a mini series I'm working on right now. It's more of about the kitchen. I like to think that, you know, everybody has different strengths. You know, trainers out there um, are really good in the gym. That's not really my talent is to help others with exercises. I'm barely just trying to figure it out myself. And that's why I pay to go somewhere and have them do a program for me because it's not my strength and it's easier to just show up and do what they tell me. The one strength I think I have though is in for sure is in nutrition in terms of not just discipline, but you know, figuring different things out, playing around in the kitchen. There's something I like about going to the grocery store and shopping and I like coming home to make recipes and try different things. And, because I just feel like nutrition is the place where you know, a lot of people struggle. You know, I, I really wish there was a way to make it easier. It, it's, it's just a hard thing for a lot of people. And I wish there was an easier way. I try and do these recipes and there's certain ways I try and release content, but it's just, this isn't my strength. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, let's go ahead and wrap it up because I got to get to the gym. So gotta go hit this workout and uh, keep my progress up. So Something I wanna bring up that'll come into play at some point is what happens when you overtrain. It's actually probably the hardest thing that you're gonna learn when it comes to training and when to back it down, when to push intensity. It's something that took me a long time, many years, and it was through experience. And that's really all I can say in this is you gotta, what do they say, listen to your body, listen to your mind, what's it telling you? 
So when I went training yesterday, something that happened to me, it was unfortunate that I got to the gym, getting ready to do my workout, had a little pre-workout, ready to go. And as soon as I started lifting weights, boom, crash. I felt no motivation, just felt weak, just felt like I couldn't get it done. And it wasn't a calorie thing, but there's been times in the past where I'm like, you know what, just push through. Something that from experience that I learned is these same feelings and symptoms, they're very in alignment with something I call, or is called um, central nervous fatigue. And it's really when you're pushing intensity and low on sleep, and it's not about nutrition, it's really just about, hey, you know what? The body is an incredible vessel. It can do amazing things. It has limitations though. And the thing is, is you have to take it slow. So it's why you can't make jumps in progress. It's why you have to take steps. Unfortunately, I had to just call my workout. I kind of got a few more reps in, did some really light movements, and then got a little bit of a squeeze and I got out of there and I went home to rest and recover. And with, with fatigue, that's sometimes what you have to do is just take rest time. And I didn't really want to, cause I wanted to make sure my week, you know, is solid, my progress is going, but this is what happens when you train for weeks, months, years on end. You have to take rest. You have to recover the body. You've probably already heard that, you know, in your sleep is when you do the most recovery. And that's kind of true. But unfortunately for me, I don't sleep a lot. So when do I recover? Well, really, it's in entertainment. It's taking a break, a mental break from, you know, content or nutrition or exercise or work. All those mentally taxing tasks. You just have to do something to unwind. And that's kind of important, you know, and then trying to just rest. There's different forms of rest. If it's something you come across, you'll know it. You can try and use Google and that's the hard part too is, you know what, there's a lot of things you read that are not correct or you're trying to be your own doctor. And I'm not a doctor, but I just know through years of this, the times when I'm tired versus fatigued versus exhausted. And learning that takes just time in and that's actually where the mental maturity comes in is where I told myself, I can't crush this workout, I have to stop, come back for another day, the weights will still be here. But if I get hurt or something happens, I'm gonna regret it. There'll be better days. I'm on a slower walk today and just taking my time. I can still walk when I'm, say, fatigued, but I have goals and I just know to get to those goals, sometimes you have to take a step back. It's just something to be aware of and something that you have to learn over time. But in the health and fitness industry, what you're gonna notice is they're like, hey, grind, push hard. You gotta go, you gotta get it done. You gotta lift, go hard, go heavy. No, like that, that's not the way. Be smart about it. Do things that make sense. Stay within your potential, stay within your limitations. We all have different windows of what helps us train to certain capacities. So learn it over time. And if it don't feel right, listen to yourself, listen to your mind, listen to that inner voice saying, hey, you know what? Let's go do something else today. Let's recover. And then we can train hard tomorrow. And then there'll be days when you just feel good. And you're like, you know what? I feel like crushing it today. And you know what? If you get an injury, that happens. That's happened to me. Don't be discouraged. It's just part of the growing process. Training is one of the hardest things in terms of, you know, figuring out a good balance and a good blend for your lifestyle and depending on your environment and your culture and, you know, whatever uh, resources you have available to you. So we only have a few episodes left in this series. So I hope you'll stay tuned. And then I'll have the Q-Form series. And then that's pretty much it so we're almost to the end we'll be grinding so if there's a lot of things you have questions about you can always ask till the next episode take care peace out